Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we explain several important facts about proportional control. Over here, you can see a basic representation or basic block diagram of a system with a simple proportional control denoted by this block here, K. In this tutorial, we will explain that without an integrator in the loop, where an integrator can come from either a plant or a controller, a proportional controller usually cannot achieve perfect set point tracking. That is, a simple proportional controller without an integrator in the loop cannot eliminate a steady state tracking error. Then, we will show that we can improve the performance of the proportional control algorithm by increasing the proportional control gain, that is, by increasing k over here. And this leads to the high gain feedback control principle. However, high proportional control gain might have several negative effects that we will explain in our future tutorials. Then, we will explain that the limitations of the simple proportional control algorithm imply that we need an integrator or an integral control action in the loop. We will explain these important facts about proportional control algorithm by solving this example. Consider this block diagram. Over here, Y is the output of the system, R is the control reference signal or the set point, U is the control input, that is the input to our plant, K is a proportional control gain and k is positive and t and a over here are arbitrary constants defining the transfer function of our plant. Here are the three questions that we will solve. First of all, assume that the set point r is a unit step signal. Then, is it possible to design the proportional control gain k such that the steady state tracking error is equal to zero? Then the next question is, if not, how can we design the proportional control gain k such that the steady state tracking error is minimized? And number three, how do the model parameters t and a influence the steady state error and our ability to control the system by using the proportional controller? But before I solve this important problem, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free control engineering tutorial as well as almost 500 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let's solve this problem. The first step is to derive the closed loop transfer function of this system. The closed loop transfer function relates the output of the system, y, with the set point, r. The closed loop transfer function is defined like this. w, cl, is equal to y of s over r of s, where y of s is the Laplace transform of y and r of s is the Laplace transform of r. Next, let's write basic equations describing this system. First, let's focus on this block over here. We have that y of s is actually equal to the transfer function of our plant, that is 1 over ts plus a multiplying u of s, where u of s is the Laplace transform of u. Then, from this block over here, we have that u of s is actually equal to k, where k is our proportional control gain, multiplying e of s, where e of s is the Laplace transform of e, and e is actually the control error. e of s is equal to from here, we can see that E of S is actually R of S minus Y of S. By combining these two equations, we have the following. U of S is actually equal to K multiplying R of S minus Y of S. Now, 
Let's substitute this equation in this equation. And consequently, we have y of s is equal to, let's see, we have k over ts plus a multiplying r of s minus y of s. Next, from this equation, we obtain the following. If we now move y of s and this term multiplying y of s to the left-hand side of the equation, we will obtain the following. We will obtain this. 1 plus k over ts plus a multiplying y of s is equal to k over ts plus a multiplying r of s. Now, over here, we can write this term as ts plus k plus a over ts plus a and multiplying y of s. This is equal to k over ts plus a multiplying r of s. Now, this term and these terms, they can actually cancel each other, and from this equation, we finally obtain the form of our closed-loop transfer function that looks like this. The closed-loop transfer function is obviously k over ts plus k plus a. Here's our transfer function again. From this equation, it follows that y of s is k over ts plus k plus a multiplying r of s. Let's read the text of the problem. Here, it is assumed that the set point is a unit step signal. In time domain, a unit step signal is denoted like this. r of t is equal to 1 multiplying h of t, where h of t is a heaviside function. The Laplace transform of r of t is r of s is equal to 1 over s. Let's substitute 1 over s over here. As the result, we obtain that y of s is k over ts plus k plus a multiplying 1 over s. To solve this problem, we need to use the final value theorem, that is, final value theorem. The final value theorem is one of the most important results in the classical control. And this theorem tells us the following. The steady state value of the output, denoted like this, YSS, that's defined as limit value when t goes to infinity, that is, when time goes to infinity, of y of t is equal to, and be careful here and memorize this, the limit value when s goes to 0, s multiplying the Laplace transform of our output, denoted by y of s. That is, the steady state value of the output is actually equal to the limit value when the complex Laplace variable s goes to zero, s multiplying y of s. Let's compute yss by using this expression. We have yss is actually equal to the limit value when s goes to zero, s multiplying y of s s multiplying, uh, let's see, y of s is given over here. It's equal to k over ts plus k plus a 
multiplying 1 over s, since we assume that the input is a unit step signal. Over here, s and s can be cancelled, and as the result we obtain the limit value when s goes to 0, k over ts plus k plus a. Consequently, yss is actually equal to, let's see from here, it's equal to k over k plus a. And this is a very important result that helps us to solve this problem. Here is YSS again. Next, let's compute the steady state error. The steady state error of the signal E, denoted as ESS, is defined like this. It's equal to limit value when time goes to infinity of the following. R of t minus y of t. Since R of t is a Heaviside function, we have that ESS is actually 1 minus the limit value when time goes to infinity of y of t. And since the limit value when time goes to infinity of y of t is ys we obtain that ess is actually equal to 1 minus yss. Let's substitute the value for yss in this equation. Consequently, we obtain that ess is equal to 1 minus k over k plus a and this is actually equal to a over k plus a. From this expression, for the steady state error, we can immediately solve this problem. Namely, we conclude that the proportional controller k cannot achieve zero steady state error. That is, for any finite value of k, ESS will not be equal to zero. And keep in mind over here that k is positive. For example, if you substitute here 10, independently from A, you can never get 0 as ESS. Also keep in mind that A is positive. Now, here is the solution of the second question. How can we design the proportional control gain K such that the steady state tracking error is minimized? Well, we can do the following. We can increase the value of K. For example, we can boost the k to be 1 million. Then if, for example, a is equal to 1, we have the following. 1 over 1, or actually 10 to the power 6, plus 1. And this is approximately 1 over 10 to the power 6, and this is actually approximately equal to 0. That is, this is a very small number. When k assumes a very large value, then we say that we achieved the so-called high-gain feedback control. High-gain feedback control obviously has a positive effect by decreasing the steady-state value of the control error. However, it has several negative effects that we will explain in our future tutorials, especially if the dynamics of the plants is as higher order system. And let's answer the last question. How do the model parameters T and A of the plant influence the steady state error and our ability to control the system by using the proportional controller? We can immediately conclude that this parameter T multiplying S does not appear in the steady state value for the control error. That is, T doesn't influence ESS. On the other hand, we can see that A strongly influences the value of ESS. Now, let's compute the first derivative of ESS with respect to A. As the result, we obtain this expression, K over K plus A squared. 
Now, since the first derivative of ESS with respect to A is always positive, we can conclude the following. If A is decreased, then ESS is decreased also. All this implies that if A has a small positive value, then the steady state error is close to zero if k is an order of magnitude larger than a. When a is close to zero, then the dynamics of the plant is actually very slow. This means that we can effectively control very slow first-order systems with proportional control. Another important observation is that to achieve a zero value of the steady-state tracking error, either the controller or the plant need to contain an integrator. And I will explain this in more details in my future tutorials. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and see you in the next video tutorial.